state playoff football down, time. And it's more weight on Johnny Hithard's shoulders than any other player on the football field. You can see why everyone else is thinking about winning games. Johnny's thinking about the scholarship office that's coming in. See, college for anyone else is just college. But for Johnny, it means success. And success in the hood breeds jealousy and envy. For that reason alone, Johnny's mom wants him to go as far away from home as he could to go to college. But Johnny knows how the street stinks. And he knows that if he goes far away, then that jealousy and envy is going to fall on his younger siblings. So for that reason, he wants to stay as close as possible. But at the same time, he also knows staying as close as possible means that he's in the area to get hit by some of the same jealousy and envy. So with all of this floating around in Johnny's head, he's got to find the best school for him and the best school for his family. Not being too close, but not being too far away. So while everyone else is thinking about football games, Johnny knows the streets are watching. The streets are watching. The streets are watching. What's going on folks? It's K Spade, the prospect, AKA the big blue Chevy driver, you know, sometimes referred to as the YouTube MVP. And I'm back with the fourth episode of Johnny Hit Hard. It is state playoff time, but you know that already because I just said that in the intro, unless you went to pee or something like that. So if you missed it, look, this is state playoff time. Johnny's thinking about what school he's gonna go to, all these scholarship offers coming in, just think. This is a kid that was so bad at one point, people didn't even think he was gonna graduate high school. And now he's got college scholarships coming every day. That's a big deal for Johnny. That's a win-win already, but you know, of course we're hoping this story goes a lot further. So let me get into the game. Like I said, the state playoff time, this is, I believe it would be called the semifinals, the game before the real game, the big game. And we're facing Rome, Georgia. They're facing Rome, Georgia, Rack City Raiders. Somebody said on my last booby video that sometimes I go third person to first person when I play these games and it's tough for me because you guys know I usually am the character. So for this time, I got two other characters that's not me. I might slip up here and there, just forgive me. But uh, the Rack City Raider defense was big this game. You see right here, they're forcing the fumble. I don't know what was taking the offense so long to get started, but even though we cracked Rome over the head in the regular season play, this is the playoffs, so you gotta respect this team, and you gotta assume that this is a team that could beat you. So that's how we approach the game. Showing you some special teams. They block Johnny, they try to. He get off the block and make the tackle. And right here, Johnny's got the purple arrow. And even though they blocked Johnny, they were so focused on blocking Johnny, they forgot about the defensive lineman. On the very next play, Johnny does not have a purple arrow, but Johnny don't give a damn. Johnny still blitzes, gets to the quarterback. Moral of the story, when he got the purple arrow, just, just take the sack, because the kid get angry when he don't sack you, and you won't like him when he's angry. So just be still, take the sack. So Johnny comes to the sideline right here. That ain't even Johnny. Who is that? Somebody come to the sideline and the coach say, damn, did you tell him to blitz? Because I didn't. That was a good call, middle linebacker. That's who I assume it was. I put this play in the video because uh, it was just a great play. It's not even Johnny's play. First of all, I don't know who the quarterback was throwing to. That guy does not play for Rome. But it's an over-the-shoulder catch, and that's a difficult catch, even for the receiver. So I had to put it in the video. Now look at this play here. Johnny has a zone for the flats. He presses a receiver, follows him back into another receiver, runs into his zone, jumps the passing route, and it should have been a pick six. But this game gives receivers, no, this game gives computer receivers a remarkable ability to change directions and keep perfect speed. That should have been a pick six because the kid was moving in the opposite direction, but whatever, whatever. So at this point, Johnny's got what? About three or four tackles, a sack, an INT, so already looking like a beast game. I told you guys, this is playoff time. This is the time to show up. The kid is showing up. And I don't know, we started slow on offense, but at this point, it's looking like Rome is who we thought they were. The same team we cracked across the head in regular season play. So we up on them big right now. It's like 34 to zero at the end of the third quarter. 
Johnny's got another short zone right here. So I'm chicken hawking. He's chicken hawking. He's chicken hawking. He's floating. And the quarterback just said, you know what? I'd rather run than take the chance of throwing the ball anywhere near Johnny hit hard. And I wish Johnny would have really put the big hit on him. But uh, I don't know. He had to chase him all the way across the field. You see the quarterback tuck up, do a good job of grabbing the football. Uh, maybe that's why he didn't fumble. I still want to see a bigger hit next time, Johnny. Real talk. So let's see. It should be fourth quarter right now. Yes, it is. 34-0. This time, Johnny's got the deep zone. It don't matter. Deep, short. He goes into bullet time. And yes, I'm still calling it bullet time for his second interception of the game. That's like four tackles, four or five tackles, a sack, two INTs. The best safety in high school right now. Johnny Hithart. So the, I told you the Rack City Raider defense play exceptional. That's another example of it. I don't know how many teams, I mean, how many team sacks or team INTs we had, but we was everywhere. So the play of the game is Johnny Hithart sacking the quarterback on a play that he was supposed to have been a, in a very deep zone. That's instinct. That's what they call it when it works. When it don't work, you get your ass chewed out by the coach. But hey, it, it works, so everybody's happy about his instinct. And the Rex City Raiders prepare to go on to the state championship. So I'm going to show you a little bit of highlights here. Then we're going we're gonna to go to some highlights of the other game. Oh, look, what was that? Four tackles, four for a loss, a sack, two INTs. So that's going to go on the stat sheet. Um, that's a pretty beast game for a safety. You got to think about it. That's a beast game because in Road to Glory, the CPU team would just throw the ball to the other side of the field so often. So uh, that's, that's a beast game. Two INTs in one game at the strong safety position. Let's go, man. That's a good game. So, of course, that's a defensive play of the game. He's got the play of the game. And he's only got one more game to go before he can truly celebrate and at least get some of this stress off of him. He's still going to be worried about school, but it'll be one less thing to worry about. So, check out the irony. You know, they showed that we are playing Milledgeville in the state championship. This is the same team that I just said. The only thing I know about this place is that it's an insane asylum there. I mean, we used to crack jokes and tell people, Damn, that boy crazy. We're going to get you sent off to Milledgeville. Like, it, it, it was just a joke. So I'll show you right here. That's another. I mean, not only is Rack City winning games, they shutting teams down in the playoffs. This is supposed to be the toughest competition you can play in the high school level. And uh, we blanking dudes. We giving dudes Krispy Kreme donuts on the scoreboard out here. Hot and ready. So as you can see, man, my boy just had another beast game. Not as beast, not the sacks and the interceptions and all that, but still just being whatever the, wherever the ball was at. Chalk one up for the Rack City Raiders. One year student, come in, don't know the system, don't know the plays, the coaches, the players, the, the anything. And I uh, started off okay and then kind of just zoned out. So I still think it's a glitch in this game because if you follow both of my series, then you know that Booby Miles had almost 2,500 recruiting points and everywhere in the country told him he would be a four string player. Whereas Johnny Hithard had about 1,500 recruiting points, almost a thousand points less. And uh, you know, he can go anywhere in America right now, anywhere. So decision time, decision time. The closest school to him would be Georgia Tech. Maybe that's too close for home. Uh, he had a connection to Auburn. Maybe that's too far away. And you see he decides on UGA and what better number to rep than 21. See if we can get a little prime time in here. All right, y'all. I'll catch you in the next one. I'm out. Peace. Rainmaker.